The Voyager crew are looking for shortcuts home when Kim finds what might be a wormhole. When they get there, they discover it is a wormhole, but it's only about 30 centimeters wide, so they poop a probe into it instead. The probe shows us that the inside is made of mint choc chip ice cream, and Janeway suggests this means it's actually a really old wormhole. The probe gets jammed, but then they detect somebody on the other side, scanning it. In sickbay, the doctor is being treated like shit by Lieutenant Bastard. Kez points this out, and the doc says being considered as nothing more than equipment by much of the crew is quite normal for him. We're again poking at the concept of sentience, but with a character who seems to be learning what that means for himself at the same time, providing a curious twist on a theme covered frequently in science fiction. Meanwhile, the senior staff are discussing the probe that's still being scanned. Not for long, though, as the wormhole's going to crush it within three days. Until then, they decide to use it as a signal booster and try chatting with whoever's shown an interest. While working on it, Kim and Balana talk about how them being lost might affect their families, which, I'll admit, is both an interesting topic in itself and quite a smooth segue into talking about their respective backgrounds. They're polar opposites, which is a cliche, but I'll allow it, with Kim having close familial bonds and Balana not seeing her parents for years. Up on the bridge, we're sending signals to the probe. Someone responds. Someone in the Alpha Quadrant. While they work on this, Kez visits Janeway. She asks why it's accepted that the Doctor is treated so poorly. Janeway states that he's just a hologram, and Kez eloquently points out to the Captain that she's a fucking bigot. To her credit, Janeway takes this on the chin and says she'll look into it. Back on the bridge, they manage to get through to a cargo ship in the Alpha Quadrant. He's having none of this Starfleet ship in the Delta Quadrant bullshit though and cuts them off. All's not as it seems, however, as Tuvok discerns that the transmission is Romulan, and there are no Romulan trade routes near where the transmission originated. He proposes that they were actually a science vessel, and trying to keep quiet about it. While they try to re-establish contact, Janeway visits the dock. She asks if there's anything she can do to help him adapt to his new role as a member of the crew. Surprised, the doctor explains that being deactivated or forgotten is deeply frustrating. When Janeway offers to give him control of his own activation system, he's taken aback. Seeing the doctor grapple with the concept of autonomy is the sort of thing I'm here for and that it comes from the captain is an equally satisfying example of a character that I want there to be more depth to showing growth. Later on, they manage to get back in contact with the Romulan vessel. Though sceptical, he agrees to a visual link to try and prove that Voyager is who they say they are. After Janeway emotionally manipulates him, or uses empathy if you're being generous, Romul Einstein, the scientist, agrees to try and convince his government to forward messages from the Voyager crew to their families. Curveball, though, because Belana suggests that, with some technical shenanigans, they might be able to use the probe as a booster to teleport the Voyager crew onto the Romulan ship. Huge if true, but there's another six seasons, so probably best you don't get your hopes up. We're given a shot of Janeway remembering that, waiting for her back home, she has the most wonderful, loving, handsome, perfect Irish setter called Molly. Oh, and a human as well, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. Kez goes to visit the Doctor, and while chatting, mentions that they may have found a way home. Unfortunately, explains the Doctor, that won't work for him, as he's integrated into the sickbay systems and can't be downloaded as a separate entity. He asks instead that she makes sure he's been deactivated when they teleport away, and I hate that we're glossing over that this would essentially be suicide for him. Given the previous conversation with Janeway, this deserved greater exploration. Back on the bridge, we're about to try a test teleport using a flashing scientific megadildo. After some fiddling, it works. Janeway suggests testing a person, but Romul Einstein can't allow them on his ship. He suggests beaming over to them as a test, and I can't help but point out that, should this go to shit, the rest of his crew, if there is one, is unlikely to view forwarding their messages favourably. I'm not in charge here though, so off we go. He gets there eventually, but there's a problem. He's not just from the Alpha Quadrant, he's from the Alpha Quadrant 20 years ago. The wormhole is also a TARDIS. This means they can't teleport back or they'll bugger the timeline. Interestingly, Romul Einstein offers to contact Starfleet 20 years after he gets back to tell them not to launch the mission that caused Voyager to be trapped. But Chakotay shoots this down, as they've already had an impact in the Delta Quadrant and would be erasing that timeline. Instead, they're left with the original plan, though somewhat altered, where Romul Einstein relays their messages after waiting 20 years. After he leaves, Tuvok tells them he looks Romul Einstein up on their database. He carks it for years before sending the messages. Maybe he passed the messages on, maybe he didn't. There's no way of knowing. 
Later, in sick bay, the Doc is treating Lieutenant Bastard again. After being flatly ignored by him once more, the Doc pulls him up on it and tells him to stop being a wanker. He's taking Janeway's message that he's a member of the crew now to heart. Finally, he tells Kez that he wants a name, a plot point that I am certain will be swiftly and satisfyingly concluded. End of episode.